the $300 million quarterback. Why the F-47 isn't just a plane. It's America's bet on the next century. It's happening. Right now, in St. Louis, the revolution is being built. Forget paper planes and trillion-dollar boondoggles. The F-47, America's first sixth-generation fighter, is in production. This isn't a drill. With a $20 billion contract awarded to Boeing in March 2025, the clock is ticking. The Air Force has confirmed the F-47 will fly in 2028, a direct answer to China's 2027 Taiwan threat window. Costing $300 million a copy, this jet flies over 1,000 nautical miles, commands a swarm of 1,000 drones, and has been secretly flying in prototype form since 2019. This is the story they aren't telling you. Is the F-47 worth its $300 million price tag? Is this the future of dominance? I want to read your take in the comments. If you found this analysis valuable, hit that like button and be sure to subscribe for more deep dives into these incredible war machines. The revolution is real and it's being built in St. Louis. For the past 20 years, American air power has been defined by two aircraft, the F-22 Raptor, our undisputed king of the skies, and the F-35 Lightning II, the jack-of-all-trades that became a political and financial lightning rod. Both are fifth-generation marvels. Both are also now, officially, yesterday's news. The future of American air dominance is being welded together today at Boeing St. Louis facility. Let's be clear. The next generation air dominance, NGAD program, which has produced the fighter designated as the F-47, is not another endless development cycle. The video evidence and official statements paint a picture of unprecedented speed. The 20 billion C in dollar contract was awarded to Boeing on March 21st, 2025. This wasn't a surprise to industry insiders, but it was a shock to those who assumed Lockheed Martin had a permanent monopoly on high-end fighters. What's more shocking is the timeline. Production didn't wait for years of review. By September 2025, a mere six months after the contract win, Air Force Chief of Staff General David Alvin confirmed that manufacturing of the first test aircraft had begun. This isn't business as usual. This is a wartime footing. Why the sudden urgency? Because the Pentagon finally admitted what many of us have been saying for a decade. The F-22, for all its majesty, is a relic of a different era. We only have 186 of them. The fleet is getting old, and its first flight was in 1997. More importantly, it was designed to fight in Europe, not across the vast, empty expanse of the Pacific Ocean. The F-47 is the solution. It's the first fighter designed from the ground up for the specific, existential threat of a peer-level conflict with China. The 2028 first flight date isn't an arbitrary goal. It is a direct, calculated response to intelligence indicating Xi Jinping wants his military prepared for a potential Taiwan contingency by 2027. The message from the Department of Defense is unambiguous. We will not be outpaced, and we will not be outgunned. The workers in St. Louis aren't just building a plane, they're building a three-year margin of deterrence. The $300 million question, why this plane? Let's address the sticker shock head on. The projected cost is $300 million per aircraft. That's three times the price of an F-35. In a world of budget deficits and competing national priorities, how can we possibly justify this? The answer is cold, hard, military calculus. The primary battlefield of the 21st century is the Pacific. The problem with the Pacific is what military planners call the tyranny of distance. It's vast, and there are very few places to land and refuel. 
Our current air superiority fighter, the F-22 Raptor, has a combat radius of approximately 590 nautical miles. This is respectable, but in the Pacific, it's a ball and chain. It means the F-22 is critically dependent on our fleet of aging aerial tankers. Tankers that are, themselves, juicy, slow-moving targets for China's long-range missiles. In any real conflict, those tankers are the first thing the enemy will hunt. The F-47, according to all program data, obliterates this limitation. Its combat radius is stated to be over 1,000 nautical miles. Let that sink in. That is nearly double the range of the F-22. This isn't an incremental upgrade. This is a doctrinal revolution. A 1,000 nautical mile radius means the F-47 can launch from bases in Guam, Japan, or the Philippines and strike deep into the South China Sea and return without needing a tanker. It means it can escort our B-21 Raider bombers, which are also being built for this exact scenario, all the way to their targets. It means the jet can stay on station, patrolling a combat zone, for far longer giving commanders options they simply do not have right now. The $300 million isn't just for a fighter, it's for range. In the Pacific, range is life, range is victory. The program almost didn't happen. In July 2024, then Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall hit the pause button, balking at the $300 million price tag. The program sat in limbo. Then, China made the decision for us. In December 2024, Beijing unveiled two distinct sixth-generation stealth prototypes. Suddenly, pausing NGAD didn't look frugal. It looked suicidal. The Air Force re-ran the numbers and concluded what was obvious. There was no viable alternative. The F-47 was the answer. In March 2025, the program was given the green light. You are paying $300 million not for a better F-22, but for an entirely new capability that renders the enemy's entire anti-access slash area denial, A2AD strategy, obsolete. Deconstructing sixth generation. It's not a fighter, it's a quarterback. For the 35, 50-year-old American, the word fighter pilot conjures images of Maverick in Top Gun. A lone wolf, a hero, pushing the envelope. The F-47 pilot is not Maverick. The F-47 pilot is Tom Landry. They are the quarterback, the mission commander, the battle manager. The most crucial, game-changing aspect of the F-47 is that it is not designed to fight alone. It is the centerpiece of what the Air Force calls a family of systems. The plan isn't just to build 185 F-47s, it's to build over 1,000 Collaborative Combat Aircraft, CCAs, what we colloquially call loyal wingmen. Think about this. For every single $300 million manned F-47 in the air, there will be a pack of five or six advanced semi-autonomous drones flying with it. This changes everything. The F-47 pilot, sitting safely in their cockpit, becomes a mission commander. They quarterback their team of drones, sending them forward into the most dangerous parts of the battle space. Need to find the enemy? Send a CCA with advanced sensors. If it gets shot down, it's a multi-million dollar loss, not a pilot's life. Need to saturate enemy defenses? Send a wave of CCAs armed with jammers and electronic warfare packages. Need to take out a high-value target? The F-47 coordinates the strike, with its CCA wingmen launching missiles from multiple directions simultaneously, overwhelming any defense. The F-47 itself is designed to be a ghost. It will feature all-aspect broadband low observability. This means it's not just stealthy to one type of radar from one direction. 
It's designed to be invisible across the entire electromagnetic spectrum, including advanced thermal management to reduce its heat signature. While this ghost stays hidden, its pack of expendable drones does the dirty work. This is the new calculus of war. We risk the machine, not the human. The $300 million price tag is the cost of the quarterback, his helmet, and his playbook. The $20 million drones are the running backs and linemen designed to take the hits. And what about performance? The F-47 will be powered by next-generation adaptive cycle engines, either GE's XA-102 or Pratt & Whitney's XA-103. In simple terms, these engines are like a variable transmission for a jet. They can reconfigure themselves in mid-flight, shifting for maximum fuel efficiency while cruising to get that 1,000-mile range, or instantly switching to maximum thrust for combat. The result? The F-47 is projected to supercruise at speeds above Mach 2. This means it can fly faster than twice the speed of sound without using its afterburner. An afterburner is a massive drain on fuel and lights up a fighter on an enemy's infrared sensors like a Christmas tree. The F-47 can run down any opponent at any time without breaking a sweat or giving away its position. This family of systems is the real sixth generation leap. It's not just a plane, it's a network. The secret history We've been flying this for five years. Here is the single most important fact from the video's intelligence. When the contract was awarded in March 2025, Boeing and Lockheed had already been flying competing prototypes in secret for five years. General Alvin confirmed that competitive prototypes had been flying since 2020. By 2023, three separate demonstrators had logged hundreds of flight hours. This is the antidote to the F-35 development hell that plagued the defense industry for two decades. The Air Force, learning a painful lesson, adopted a new model. Fly before you buy. Instead of spending a decade designing a perfect plane on paper only to find it didn't work in the real world, the Air Force used digital engineering to build full-scale flying aircraft in the black. They tested them, refined them, and proved the concepts before a single dollar of the massive production contract was awarded. This explains the incredible speed we're seeing now. Boeing isn't starting from a blank sheet of paper in September 2025. They are starting from a proven, flight-tested airframe. They spent the last five years de-risking the technology. They know it works. Now, it's just a matter of bending metal and starting the assembly line. This secret history should give us, as taxpayers, a massive confidence boost. This isn't a science experiment. It's a production run. The F-47 that flies in 2028 won't be a prototype. It will be the production model. The road to 2028. The industrial base is waking up. Boeing has invested nearly $2 billion in its St. Louis facility in recent years. This wasn't a gamble. It was preparation. They were building the factory of the future, knowing this contract was coming. So, what happens next? The timeline is aggressive, but it's not impossible thanks to the classified work already completed. Now, 2026, Boeing's engineers and technicians are laying up the first composite structures. They are assembling the airframe, installing the wiring harnesses, and integrating the core systems. This is the meticulous, foundational work. Late 2026, 2027, the first aircraft becomes structurally complete. The engines, avionics, and sensor suites are installed. This is when it starts to look like a fighter. Ground testing begins, powering up the systems, testing the landing gear, and ensuring all the code works. 2027, 2028, taxi testing. 
the F-47 will roll under its own power for the first time. 2028. First Flight A test pilot will take the F-47 into the sky, sending an unambiguous message to the world. America's sixth-generation capability is real. 2029. Initial Operational Capability, IOC. This is the key date. Assuming the test program is successful, the first operational F-47s could begin arriving at Air Force squadrons. Pilots will begin training, and tactics will be developed. By 2030, just as the F-22 fleet is showing its age, the F-47 will be on the flight line, ready to change the calculus for anyone who thinks they can challenge us in the skies. Conclusion The Price of Dominance the world we grew up in, the world of the 1990s and thousands, defined by uncontested American power, is over. Great power competition is back. The world is more dangerous today than at any point since the Cold War. In this new era, air superiority is not a given. It must be earned. It is the foundation upon which all other military operations rest. Without control of the air, our bombers can't fly, our ships are vulnerable, and our troops on the ground are exposed. The F-22 Raptor, a magnificent machine, gave us that superiority for 20 years. Now, that gap is closing. China's J-20 is operational in large numbers. Russia has its Su-57, and both are pouring billions into their own sixth-generation programs. The F-47 is America's answer. It is the re-establishment of that gap. The $300 million price tag is steep, but it is the price of deterrence. The F-47, with its 1,000-mile range and its pack of loyal wingmen, is not designed to start a war. It is designed to prevent one. It is a technological marvel built for a single purpose, to make any potential adversary wake up look at the capabilities of the United States Air Force, and conclude, not today. Peace through strength isn't just a political slogan, it's an industrial strategy. And right now, in St. Louis, that strategy is being forged from carbon fiber and steel. The F-47 is more than a plane. It's a statement of American resolve, and it is coming.